So today I thought I would just give you some observations that I've made. I'm temporarily on crutches for, I don't know, it could be a few months. I'm probably not going to keep talking about it because that's boring. But I am on crutches and I'm seeing the world in a whole new way, kind of, sort of. I'm very thankful that this is going to be a temporary thing for me. But it has made me notice some stuff and I wanted to share that with you. As people, we're always trying to learn and grow and maybe my experience will help you. Or maybe you can just laugh at me, which is always fun too. I mean, it's definitely in my top five favorite things to do. So do be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, all those algorithmic annoying things that YouTubers ask you to do. Otherwise, the next time you put a cotton bud in your ear, it's gonna get stuck. That would be annoying, so don't want that to happen. Most people have been on crutches at some point in their life, right? Like, I don't think I'm special here in being on crutches. It's just, this is my life experience and I like to share my life things with you, people who live in my camera. Very much I'm experiencing a microcosm of what actual people with disabilities experience, but I'm just interested in reflecting upon that. If you didn't know, I recently had an ACL replacement with my hamstring. They took my hamstring, they pulled it out, they rolled it like it was a piece of pizza dough and they put it into my knee to make it stronger in the long run. It's a pretty long recovery process, but so far I'm glad I did it. Here's hoping I remain so. I don't know all the correct terminology, so please forgive me, I'm learning. I'm a person with a mobility issue right now, it's not long term, but people who have long term issues would be people with disabilities. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know the term differently abled has been thrown around, but I don't know. That's, I don't know. You tell me. One thing that I have noticed is just how visible you are when you're walking around with crutches. Like people stare at you a lot. I'm kind of an ambivert. I'll be honest with you. I think I'm an introvert telling myself I'm an ambivert because I don't really like doing things that extroverts like to do. However, in contradiction to that rule, I do like being here on the internet, which is quite visible. So I don't know, we're running with ambivert. The first thing, and this happens not just when you're on crutches, obviously, it also happens when people are being excessively polite, but people are more often excessively polite when you're on crutches, which is a good thing. It's holding the door, but when you're far away from it, they hold the door for you, and then you essentially have to hop really fast, potentially tripping up over yourself to get to the door. And I get the predicament. I've been in it too. You see somebody coming, you're like, will I hold the door or be an ass and just let it drop? Or is being an ass the optimum thing at this time because I'm so far away, being an ass is the thing that I should do. Legitimately, it sometimes is the right thing to do, but more often than not, when you're on crutches, people are polite. And I could be a good 200 meters away and somebody will hold the door. Hold the door! And I can tell they're in a hurry, but they're being nice and holding the door for me. So then I hop fast to get to the door, which actually puts me in a precarious situation. Also, this is my third time on crutches and only this time I've noticed how many doors are super heavy and have fire doors that just swing closed a lot. So I'm super grateful for somebody holding the door for me because those doors are heavy. But if I have to hop fast, it's kind of like counterproductive. Next hot tip in case you end up on crutches, don't assume a puddle is just a puddle of rain. Because it might not be. Moving on. Oh, next thing that I'm gonna add to this list is the fact that if it doesn't already exist, I can't believe it, but there should be some kind of device whereby you can hold your phone in the crutches because a lot of times I've been going places and I've been holding my crutches, but I've also been holding my phone and I'm like, I'm gonna drop my phone. If that exists, great. If it doesn't, somebody should invent that. Actually, I do think it should come as standard on hospital crutches. I'd say it probably is a thing with people who have canes and stuff, but it should be just a thing with crutches because everybody uses their phone all the time and it's hard to maneuver when you're on crutches. The next thing is actually, it's more for me putting out a question to you guys, okay? the disability spot on a bus am I allowed to sit in that spot because I don't know I have a temporary mobility issue but I kind of do need the leg space sometimes bending my knee is not so fun right now so you could argue yes you are allowed to sit in the chair for people with disabilities when you are temporarily immobile temporarily now granted, they are probably way better at navigating the entire situation than I am. I am a newbie, I am a short-termer. But there's just one seat for a person in a wheelchair on a bus. Maybe there's two, you could argue there are two. It's also the same seat though that is for babies in prams, which kind of has the vibe of how when I go to get my lady sanitary products, they are also right next to nappies. And that's just insulting. I'm not feeling the vibe, you know? They are not the same thing. So yeah, I don't know if I should occupy that spot or not. 
I mean, it's fine if nobody else gets on, but if they do, I'm going to feel terrible and I'll probably want to move, but it's hard to move. So I don't know, let me know in comments. Oh, and the next thing is, there are so many lovely people who have offered me a seat when I get on the Lewis or something on crutches. Cause obviously when you're on crutches, you don't want to be swaying from side to side and potentially fall over. That's the last thing that you want. One might call it a bad thing to happen. And that is something I generally do on public transport. If I see an older person or a person who needs the seat, I will give them the seat. That's just a thing that I do. And most people do do it, which is great, but some people make a big freaking deal out of it. Like they make a song and dance about it. Like they're a freaking saint for offering you the seat. It just feels very look at me. Now, next time I encounter it going forward, I want to offer my seat to somebody. I'm going to be the pillar of discretion about it. Just be like, hey, would you like my seat? Not, hey, there's a seat here. You're on crunches. You need a seat. This is my seat and you can have this seat because I'm a good person. Have my seat. It feels a bit attention grab. Okay, the next one is kids staring. Kids, when they see something for the first time, are going to stare at a certain age, at a certain age. I would say a four or five, maybe six year old staring is okay. But beyond that, like I see your nine, 10 year old staring, like you haven't taught your child anything about people with disabilities or just not staring at people. I'm not a parent, but I would have thought that was a thing that you teach children not to stare at people who are different. I would have thought that was a thing. I had this one kid in the supermarket. She was about 10 years old, like double digits we're talking here. And she was like staring at me the entire time. And it made me feel very uncomfortable. I did wonder, was she like a Damien situation at one point? Look at me, Damien. It's all for you. That's the thing I would even do with my niece, just mention to her, don't stare at people. But I mean, there are adults who stare, so, you know, some people can't be helped. The next thing that I really need to acknowledge is that life is a lot slower. Like it takes me a lot longer to get somewhere. And that sounds so obvious, but also need to factor that in. For example, I was on the phone to my friend and I said, I'm getting off the Lewis. I'll call you back in like five minutes when I'm back at the hotel. But it took me about 15 minutes to get to the hotel because I didn't factor in the slowness of walking with crutches. Just something to be aware of going forward. Like it takes longer and that sounds obvious, but I just didn't think about it. The next thing that I found kind of odd is a lot of people ask you what happened. And I think that's like, okay, that people ask that in shops, but also it could be a little intrusive, not for me, but for somebody could find that a little intrusive. Maybe they were on a sex swing and fell out. You don't know. To clarify, that's not what happened to me. But I found myself telling the story over and over and over to total strangers and then walking away and being like, they know a lot more about me than I actually want them to. Does this happen with people with disabilities or is it just the temporarily immobile? Do people ask you straight out the gates what happened or what's wrong? Because it would depend on your circumstances if that's okay or not. The next thing, and I just don't do this. A man in the restaurant picked up my crutches and moved them the other day. And I was like, I need those. Don't move them. I would say with crutches or wheelchairs or a cane or something like that, just consider that to be an extension of the person's body, especially a person with a permanent disability. For them, that wheelchair is a lifeline. Don't just pick it up and move it. I felt violated. I felt a little violated, like a little bit. My friend got up and put them and moved them back, but I, it was rude. That was rude. He was rude. We can agree he was rude. My crutches were not in the way, by the way. They were just on the side of my table. Another big thing that I've considered a lot this week is the fact that sometimes I have to choose between being in pain a little bit or being a little bit drugged up. A lot of you were concerned because the hospital had me on some heavy medication. And then I wonder if I hate you, I do. And I'm just back to like normal kind of stuff now. It's prescription, so it's heavy stuff, but it's, it's more regular stuff. But when I am taking like pain pills or anti-inflammatories, I'm a little dopey. Like I'm a bit slower, I'm a bit sleepy. And if I'm doing something, I have to kind of choose between whether I want to take them or be fully alert and in my mind and a little bit in pain. And I gotta think that's gotta be a thing for people with disabilities all the time. Like they all the time have to choose whether to go through their day being in pain or whether they want to like dope themselves up on meds and maybe lose a little bit of their alertness. 
Like, that's a thing I hadn't considered before. It was just interesting to me. The next thing I found interesting, because it was like the physio shows you the right way and the wrong way to hold your crutches. And they show you, and then you go off and you do it whatever freaking way you want to do, which is probably not the correct way, but it helps you get around. However, when your friends ask you to have a go on your crutches and they do it wrong, you're like, you're doing that wrong because now I'm a professional on how to use crutches. It's just a little hypocrisy I found funny. And the final thing that crossed my mind, and not that it's come up for me, All around me are familiar. but it must be hard to hold crutches and hold somebody's hand at the same time. How does that work? Anyway, these are just some random brain thoughts that came into my head this week that I wanted to share with you that is helping me grow as a human being. I hope in brain, not brawn. But that's it for today. See you guys on the other side. Bye. Are my people bigger from the drugs? Are they notably bigger? I would feel absolutely mortified. Now granted, they're probably navigating the entire situation a lot easier. And the funny part, and the funny part is that, oh, this happens a lot. Somebody recently pointed out on social media that they thought I had a cold sore. I don't, I just have a frackle under my lip. Well, it's on my lip, but it's not a cold sore.